Singapore in the Manila and Singapore. I envy Singapore. It's so much greener. Oh, yeah. Yaku. No, Yaku died by four to three. Yaku hit a man. I will leave him at home. So, my first um, project offer was to build a house. Um, on this small land plot of about 70 square meters. Um, uh, about uh, um, floor space of uh, 90 square meters. And um, uh, uh, the project um, uh, was uh, to build a house that was uh, なかなか皆さん方これから人生を送って計画を取りたいと思います。<笑>でもそれがあの、uh, so、で住むようでだったんです。あなたが双子だからうちも双子生まれてきたんだから責任を取ってくれる。So the client told me,、um, I, I'm I end up having a twin maybe because you are a twin, one of the
and talk along was, was uh, very active and very, very uncomfortable. When you um, work, you have to have a passion, you have to have affection. And love as well. You, when you keep a dog, you need to, to have love. Well, you might know um, some of uh, Gold Provisier's uh, chairs if you need to design it like this. Like, like and uh, Jean Nouvel uh, told me. Well, did you clean this pattern? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he's used, uh, this dog is useful because um, he barks a lot when the, um, what the potential clients or the clients that I don't like come visit me so, um, to, to offer a project. So I can tell that potential client um, that, uh, sorry, um, I don't think I can work for you because my protégé is barking so much. <laughs> well, I wanted to really have a big dream, as big as possible. Well, uh, the, Japan, as a country, um, values academic qualifications. But then I knew that uh, I can survive with big dreams. So this is uh, the, the city of Osaka. So in my late 20s, I made a proposal um, to try to uh, um, uh, put the greenery on top of uh, these buildings. And many people chided me. Um, that's, that's a ridiculous idea. And I came up with another proposal to uh, um, put uh, museums of art and uh, other museums on top of buildings. And many people scolded me. Now, the next proposal of mine was to um, uh, put uh, the museums uh, underground, under uh, parks, park spaces. People said that's impossible. And they chided But uh, because they chided me, I was, go I was going to make something like this um, eventually. <laughs> The top space is uh, um, the surface space is parks. Right. And the museum on the ground that was done here. Well, 25 years ago, in 1988, I started um, uh, museums in an island called Naoshima. <coughs> Well, this was how the island looked like. Uh, a lot of the environment was uh, destroyed uh, as Japanese economy grew. This is how it looked like. Once the environment is destroyed, it's very uh, difficult to restore environment. <laughs> Now, the owner of uh, uh, the Daoshima, uh, this island, uh, Mr. Fukutake, um, the, the head of uh, Benesse Corporation, had a dream. Um, he wanted to keep uh, what this island had. They still have the scenery and the ocean and everything. Keep what, what they have and then create the most famous cultural island in the world. So this is how I see my So I am uh, so When you look at history, uh, there are many things that you can learn from history. This is Mount Roku. 1,000 meters uh, in height. And 30 kilometers uh, in height. All the trees were cut um, to, um, uh, to, um, to use the trees as uh, fuel and energy 100 years ago. 
だから今若い人たちは今のうちにその自分の文化力をの基礎を作ってほしいと思います。So, for those of you who are young, I hope you will be curious about many things so that you can、um, uh, build your cultural sensi sensibility. Well, when、uh, this work of uh, um, uh, Eric Sama was installed, I asked her,、um, Does this represent pumpkin? And she, said, she scolded me, You are an architect, you should be、uh, more and more, more sensible. <laughs> To me, it still looks like a party. <laughs> But she is always dreaming. She is always、um, living her adolescence and living her youth. She, this is she. <laughs> this was、um, a photo when she was 73. I love the way she lives, I love her words. But、um, I tend to uh, decline uh, the offer of uh, um, having coffee or having any meals with her. <laughs> oh, I have my own taste. <laughs>
Um, this now she also has a hotel um, with 100 rooms. Richard Long was staying in one of the rooms, and the owner provided the paint and the brush in the room. <laughs> of course, he started painting uh, circles in the room. And this is like uh, Paris uh, some time ago. In Montparnasse, there's a, a hotel, famous hotel called Coupon Hotel. And uh, uh, there, uh, artists like Picasso and Matisse uh, painted uh, their works uh, there um, uh, instead of paying for their meals. So it's similar. And this is a concentric circle. And uh, when um, directors of uh, famous museums of Guggenheim and, and uh, um, Museum of uh, Modern Art uh, come to stay in this hotel, they ask to stay in this particular room uh, with Richard Long's uh, uh, work. Now, there are very strange people all over the world. <laughs> This is a renovation project of a 100-year-old house. Restore it um, like how it was. And modern um, art is installed inside the house. This is uh, uh, what I designed. Um, it's a new project. James Starrow is a music. When you enter uh, this uh, space, um, you will not see anything for the first 10 minutes. Um, well, some people who are not curious, they will just leave the room straight away. Well, um, out of 10 business people who visit there, to, um, two or three people leave uh, because they can't see anything. But these people are not curious at all. Their life is as good as ended. <laughs> so if you um, happen to visit this museum uh, and uh, feel like leaving uh, this space straight away, um, you have to think your life is almost in the end. <laughs> So after 10 minutes, you start to see this. And uh, for those people who stay, um, after seeing this, uh, they are all uh, very moved. Why are they, they uh, moved? Um, is it because they understand this work of art? No. They are moved and inspired that they were able to stay there for 10 minutes. <laughs> But for uh, those young people, I would like you to um, uh, start uh, developing yourself and establishing who you are. So this is another restoration project. So inside is like this. I wanted to uh, do, uh, create an exhibition space there. And I've been visiting this place for 15 years. But they, the, the owners of the house, they, they don't want to do anything like that exhibition space. But the, this owner of this house is already 85 years old, so I think it's a matter of time. <laughs> when you start uh, any project or work, you should never give up. You really should give up. It's a chance. Because a chance or opportunity will come. The chance might be very slim, but it will come. This is an art museum called the Chichu Art Museum, where there is a Monet's Works exhibition space. Well, uh, there is an uh, Orangery Museum in Paris which exhibits Monet's works. And I was asked to create a, a better um, museum than that. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, uh, my client is a public uh, body. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, actually, um, uh, we wanted a pond. And then the next month, straight away, the, the construction of the pond, uh, of the water space started. The lobby um, has an 18-meter uh, ceiling. Um, the, this opera house is supposed to be completed by the end of uh, uh, this year. But I encounter some problems too. The problem is that um, this is the second opera house in Shanghai, and in the neighboring district of Shanghai, they are building the third opera house, and the client came to me to design that opera house too. And on top of the three um, opera houses, there will be two more. So altogether, there will be five opera houses. So I asked them, uh, where can you find the opera singers to sing in so many opera houses? They said, oh, don't worry, I, we don't worry about that. But then you can't just build um, the, the uh, structures, you have to think of the uh, uh, inside, well, what do you do inside? So, um, uh, nearing completion. Samsung is a company Well, you know a company called Samsung in Korea. Well, um, the lady called Lee Kong is at the top, um, she is 83 years old. And she asked me to build a museum of art um, in the suburbs of Seoul, about two hours away from Seoul. This is the next So it's almost completed. I mean, the museum will open in May. Um, the, 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 the work has progressed at a tremendous speed. This is Capella, Hotel in Niseko. Well, um, at the interview earlier on, I was asked um, why I use so many circles um, as uh, a motif. And uh, I think circle is um, uh, one of the starting points or the origin of an architectural work. Uh, it's going to be a very grand uh, scale hotel with water space in the middle. I hope many of you will visit uh, this place in Hokkaido. It's a very nice place. I'm doing another Capella Hotel project in Chien Tao Lake. I'm involved in too many projects, sometimes I get confused with one is which. Finally, I'd like to um, tell you about Japan's bid to uh, host the Olympics. And I'm uh, a supervising or overseeing the Olympics uh, uh, facilities. Um, when the, the, the two uh, stadiums um, uh, built, uh, everybody in the world will be um, uh, enthusiastic and um, so overwhelmed. This was, uh, these were uh, built when uh, Japan hosted the last Olympics, and uh, um, uh, the 
of course, the architecture itself, the design itself is wonderful, but it's not just that. Kenzo Tange, um, who built uh, this, um, started to be appreciated as a great architect because he built these Olympic stadiums. And uh, um, uh, Japan, uh, as a whole, um, uh, wanted to make uh, the cities in Japan an attractive one. Olympic Stadium there. There's a main street called Omote Sando in the center. Um, in 1923, 1st uh, of uh, September, uh, Tokyo was hit by a major earthquake called Kanto Great Earthquake. And after that, um, uh, there was a project to build um, a group of uh, houses called Dojunkai Apartments, um, and trying to attract people to come back to uh, the city and live uh, in peace. Um, in an architecture, uh, peace of mind, um, uh, living in that particular space, is very important. And sense of uh, security and safety um, is also important. So, um, uh, since I was asked to uh, renovate that uh, um, uh, uh, group of uh, houses, and I wanted to preserve uh, the scenery uh, impressions uh, of the people who lived there, um, that street was lined with uh, keyaki or Japanese zelkova trees, and I wanted to um, uh, preserve some of that, so I was wondering how. <laughs> So I decided to uh, uh, do a building 30 uh, uh, into 30 meters on the ground. And uh, a building is deep, uh, uh, deeper underground. Uh, this portion above is uh, a smaller. So this is how it looks like. And these are the um, uh, owners. And uh, a redevelopment project, uh, of an existing project is rather difficult, so I decided to have um, a thorough discussion with these uh, uh, owners. <laughs> and I decided to um, keep um, one block, an uh, old block. So uh, only one uh, old block remains. <laughs> And this um, uh, street um, uh, outside this building um, had an inclination of one area, so I decided to uh, use the same inclination for a slope inside the building. And I talked about the greening uh, of the top of the buildings, and for this project I did that. It took quite a long time for all this greenery to grow on top of the building. <laughs> and uh, um, so there is that uh, triangular space um, at the side. Um, so I decided to build a sort of a plaza, a square, of a triangular shape. And uh, people will go up and down the building on a slope. This is a slope. Um, I, I have to do something that is unique to the site that you can only create in that particular site. I have to leverage on what exists, what is there, the elements that is there, and then um, be created. You know, uh, I've been his friend for the last 40 years. He wanted to build a museum there. 
This is in Tokyo Midtown. In his design, he said, yeah, okay, always um, uh, use one fabric, one single fabric. And so I translated his idea of a single um, fabric into a single um, sheet of uh, steel. So this is a single um, uh, steel sheet. There are some things that only Japanese can create. Um, this is a, a steel sheet, um, uh, thinner than 10 millimeters, and uh, it's very difficult to um, um, make this uh, large uh, steel sheet without any dents in a very straight uh, manner. And uh, um, I was involved in the uh, uh, building of George, uh, Giorgio Armani's uh, head office in Milan. I would do public school. And I saw it and this and said, use this kind of steel sheet. But I told uh, Armani, if you want this kind of steel sheet, you have to move your head office to Japan. <laughs> and he was uh, rebutting me, what are you thinking? I am in Milan. <laughs> uh, it's extremely difficult to, to do this or find this in Milan. Well, as you know, uh, Italy's economy is really um, uh, quite a damn drain. But right now, I'm involved in the uh, projects, uh, museum building projects in Venice and Bologna. Um, I told some Italians, your economy is uh, doing so bad, how can you be making or building uh, art museums? But I love Italians. You know the answer um, by many of these Italians are, because it, the economy is poor, uh, we are building culture. But you know what Japanese have been saying? Uh, you don't, we don't worry about culture, all we need is economic growth. That is why Japan has really come down to, to the today's level. And Italians was uh, saying, um, I, I was telling them Italian economy is on the verge of collapse. I, is, is it going to be okay? Well, Italians were saying, well, wait for five years. Italian economy will be driving the world economy. <laughs> That's incredible. You can't really believe that, right? But it's nice to hear that. There's a station called Shibuya in Tokyo. I was um, asked to build a uh, station 30 meters into uh, the ground by Tokyo Railway. Uh, in my um, uh, projects, it's usually the top um, uh, person in a company, president of a company, that asks me to do a project. But then the middle management people, like general managers of uh, divisions of companies, will usually try to stop the president from ask, uh, asking me to do a job. They say it's too risky to ask Ando. You never know what you will get. <laughs> but then eventually they will um, ask me to do that, and they will uh, give an order to me. <laughs> So 30 meters from there to there. Lobby. Lobby. And some people said, well, you know, I told you, you end up having a, a something like a dodgeball or rugby ball. <laughs> In fact, this ball is quite good, though. <laughs> 
Um, you get some draft or the wind from above. And when the trains come into the station, it creates some airflow. So uh, we use this draft and air to cool the station. So you don't emit uh, any CO2 at all, zero emission. And at the same time, you see some openings uh, above and below, so you have some sense of uh, um, uh, direction, um, a sense of where you are, even though you are 30 meters underground. So there's a at atrium kind of space uh, from above. Well, when you are underground, uh, human psychology is that uh, you become very insecure because you don't know where you are. I would like to um, uh, send one message or make one request to those of you who want to do architecture. A lot of people have high hopes and expectations on architecture. To build beautiful uh, architecture. To build something functional, but that at the same time something safe. We have to conserve energy and resources. So um, once you build a uh, structure, it has to last for 100 years or 200 years. So um, you can see through from, from the top to the bottom. Uh, this station will open next month. Well, so um, I hope you will visit uh, Tokyo just to um, ride this uh, way, ride this train. Well, um, I, I designed an Olympic stadium for 2016, um, a big for Tokyo Olympics. Using um, a sea and sea energy. And using solar energy. I wanted to build an area uh, which can be uh, solely powered by solar energy. And uh, because uh, by recycling the uh, energy, you don't have to use anything other than solar energy. <laughs> but then uh, we were not successful in, uh, uh, in 2016 Olympics. <laughs> but we uh, would like to uh, host the 2020 Olympics. <laughs> um, I wanted to uh, do that uh, in order for uh, Japan to re recover its pride and to try to um, convey its attractiveness to the world. This is a 100 hectare space. It's actually um, an island, uh, well, the space built with uh, waste and refuse. It's about the same size as Imperial Palace. So the waste or refuse were stacked up. And I wanted to uh, uh, build uh, one million um, tree seedlings. And one tree um, will cost, uh, uh, seedling will cost 500 yen. And I talked to the government um, uh, of Japan and the governor of Tokyo, and they said they will support me uh, because it's my, it's Ando's project. <laughs> it was 10 years ago. Everywhere I go to do a lecture, I, um, I did the fundraising. I asked the former President Chirac of France as well. And he says, okay, I will support you. <laughs> and I asked uh, Ms. Wang, uh, my uh, my daddy as she passed away. <laughs> <laughs> he may have, this person might pass away soon too. <laughs> <laughs> and he 
Taiwan's uh, most yeah. inspiring uh, speech. And for the first time, I'll see advocacy for the environment in a very new way. Uh, I'd like to uh, invite you to stay on stage. And, and with me, of course, is my colleague, uh, Mr. Sito Sanango, <coughs> who will act as an interpreter for this next part of the, today's event, which is a question and answer session. Let's take a seat. Um, we don't have very much time, but uh, we'll have at least three questions. Um, those of you who want to ask, Sando question. The mic along the aisle. Please come to the aisle and pose a question. Suto will translate this into Japanese and uh, backwards, right? In English. Let me take the first question. Hi, uh, Mr. Hando, thank you very much for the talk. Enjoy it a lot. Um, Singapore has a very unique piece of property. Uh, I don't know whether you know of it. It's called the Green Corridor. This is essentially a piece of uh, a land which used to be the railway from Malaysia to Singapore. So what do you think are the possibilities for this piece of real estate? Or given the number of trees that you've been planting, should nothing be done about it?